We now know that the early years are a time of uniquely rapid development of the neurobiological systems that drive lifelong development. We know that this developmental process is exquisitely attuned to the surrounding environment. In fact, our genes are designed to grab up whatever environmental input surrounds them. Um, notably, when children are very young, the most important part is the environment of relationships that surround children. And so in a way, you can think of all early environments that young children are growing up in as interventions. And we can either choose to make them be supportive of the developing neurobiological systems or not. What is new is that we now have a deeper understanding of what this implies about early education. You've seen um, the news about the so-called word gap, which is not new. We've known about the word gap for many, many years. Um, and deeper knowledge about the specific developmental systems that are most profoundly af affected by environmental variation. And they tend to be those that have profound impacts on children's emerging capacities to learn. So in general, this knowledge base casts early educational settings, early family settings, um, as part of a strategy for altering developmental, what we call epigenetic processes that affect the immune system, the stress response system, the reward system, and the executive functioning and self-regulatory systems in young children. Good news is that these systems are highly malleable during the early years and indeed through early adolescence, which means that both preschool environments and elementary environments are shaping, um, and middle school environments, maybe less so high school environments, <laughs> shaping the neurobiology of the developing child. What this says to me is we can't do nothing. Uh, forgive the double negative. OK, so drawing from the report, I'm going to really focus on what we know about the economic evidence on preschool education and, again, on the impacts. So uh, what we conclude in this report with regard to the economic impact is that quality preschool, ed quality preschool education is a profitable investment. There are a number of people making this point, of course, across different disciplines. This we know is true of the older uh, demonstration programs. Um, uh, we heard the seven to one figure. Um, that is one figure. For the Abbasidarian program, another high intensity demonstration, older program, it was more like two and a half to one. Um, we have to look very carefully at what program we're talking about. I don't personally cite the seven to one figure very much anymore. In Tulsa, we had um, cost benefit analytic work done. Um, and the figure we have for our evidence is three to one. Uh, Boston is generating a similar three to four to one kind of a ratio. So these are programs at scale. I still think that's pretty good. I certainly would put my dollars in something that was going to give me a three or four to one um, return. OK. Uh, short term impacts. OK. Um, so there is a meta-analysis meta that was recently published. What you do in a meta-analysis quickly is you look across outcomes for many, many, many studies and get sort of a generalized impact, if you will. Um, this meta-analysis meta looked at 84 different studies of preschool conducted from 1965 to 2007. So yes, it included the Tulsa study. It did not include the new Boston study. I don't believe it included the Tennessee study. Um, and they found an average impact of about a third of a year of additional learning as a result of preschool education writ large. What we now have, of course, and very popularized, right, are these high scale, uh, sorry, at scale, high quality state or city preschool programs that are now generating outcome studies. And in both Tulsa and Boston, um, we have produced between a half year and a full year of additional learning as a result of attending these preschool programs. Again, I'm going to let Bill um, talk about the design issues. I do, however, want to make the point about why we refer to Tulsa as high quality. It is not because of the degree teachers, actually. We weren't able to look at the impacts of teacher uh, degree or education, because everyone is the same in Tulsa. They require that teachers have a BA and an early childhood certification. We assert that Tulsa is of high quality 
because we invested um, a great deal of money going into every single preschool classroom in Tulsa and observing both the inter instructional and interpersonal transactions between the teachers and their students and counting up the time they spent on academic instruction. And on both of those accounts, the preschool programs in Tulsa scored higher than um, other preschool programs around the country, first of all, not to mention what we've seen in more typical childcare programs across the country. So that's why we refer to Tulsa as um, high quality. Um, there's less firm evidence um, from either of these programs, and in the literature as a whole on social emotional outcomes, the Tulsa kids did um, have better, if you will, attentional capacities, um, and on a number of other measures, um, just suggesting that they were more engaged in learning in the classrooms. The Boston children, especially the low-income children, had higher executive functioning capacities. What about fade out? Perfect, yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, um, so most generally we see a pattern of catch-up, if you will, by the control children in this research, including from the demonstration projects, Perry Preschool, Abecedarian, as well as um, in um, other evidence. I'll talk about Tulsa in just a moment. Um, it's not that learning is lost, it's just that going forward these kids tend to converge and show the same rate of learning going forward, whether they attended preschool or not. Everyone is concerned about this phenomenon, okay? Um, and there is a very healthy scientific debate about what is going on that I'm sure will be continued in this room momentarily. Um, is it that preschool impacts don't last because preschool doesn't work? Is it that preschool impacts don't last because the K-12 schools fail to sustain the impacts? Mm -hmm. Is it that they last but we're not measuring them? You know, there, and there are other possibilities as well. Um, what we do know is that despite fade out and declining control treatment group differences, over time, again, even in the famous Perry Preschool and Abbott Sedarian programs, that there are large effects in young adulthood on schooling attainment and earnings and crime reduction um, in young adulthood. 